Hi, I'm Billy Noel. Welcome to Desert Island Tims. My guest today presents a very popular online radio show, Celtic Dreams. Big G, how are you, sir? How you doing, Billy? I feel I'm sitting here for an interview. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm sweating, palms in my hands and everything are sweating here. No, I'm very well, thanks. Thanks very much for inviting me along. <laughs> it's good to have you here. So, what was life like for you growing up? Uh, do you know, Bala, it was actually, uh, there were good times. Uh, I was brought up in Coat Bridge and, and Lang Lone, and I kind of, my mum obviously moved there because she had three sisters there. I had plenty of cousins around. Uh, all football daft, all playing about, all doing things what we used, to, what any kid done in those days, like playing kick the can and chapdoor runaway and things <laughs> like that. Totally different from nowadays, but no, it, it was good. Uh, obviously, there were me, mum and dad, and my two older sisters, so I was I was the youngest. Uh-huh. Out there, it was all so, but no, uh, I I probably I would say I really enjoyed growing up. It was it was different. Do you know what I mean for? In, for today's society but as I say we, uh, we're always there and we're having always cousins about us and all that so no I've really enjoyed my younger days Fantastic so your first song what would that be and why did you pick it? Well do you know this i seen this band believe it or not in Apollo uh, in Glasgow now I must have been about 12 and it, I think it was shortly after the Apollo got pulled down mm-hmm. uh, in Glasgow and it was 12 and I went with my, my young cousin there, Pat, and uh, the two of us went away into a bus. I think it must have only been about 11, 12. I went into a bus into Glasgow, and I totally loved this band when they were growing up. So it was madness. It must be love. That was It Must Be Love by Madness. So what made you decide to start up Celtic Dreams? Well, do you know, it was actually my, my son... Uh, comes on the show Rido is uh, known on the show he we used to I used to sit and listen to another radio show on a Friday night which was was a brilliant and that was a Friday night for me just coming in for work chilling out and next thing he says do you fancy doing a show now if anybody's got a teenage son out there 15 years of age and he says do you want to do a show with me and Anybody would say aye. They would be off their head because to spend some time with my boy, the two of us just getting things ready, going through the playlist and all that. It was, it was great. Little did I know he was going to bugger off after four weeks <laughs> while up and running. Do you know what I mean? And he makes what he would like to say. He makes guest appearance right. on the show now. But uh, he, he, it was him that asked me. So it, it did start off on a Saturday night. Then we, we eventually moved to a Friday night. But uh, doing the show's been great, as I say, uh, at the start, even the, the missies get involved because we all go to the football, mm-hmm. she gets involved in it, uh, the oldest boy, he comes on and he gives his views as well, so, but with doing the show, it was mostly, it was my boy who asked me to come in, uh, do you want to do a show for us, so we started doing a show, and, well, I would like to think that it's grown. And mm-hmm. hopefully it will still grow. Mm-hmm. I've met some wonderful people doing the show. I've met uh, people that I'd never even thought I would meet, and and a lot of people that I've heard of and things like that. Like we we're talking, like even Graham from Beyond the Waves. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last time we was over, I met him. We went to the Wolf Tones concert together, and for somebody, for me, doing the show to meet somebody from America, and to do that, I've met like. Uh, they, they listen to some good crack it's on every St Wednesday night uh, from Dart Heart Mike he mm. does a radio show in America I've spoken to him a few times I'm actually going to be meeting him next year when I go to uh, New York So and it's these kind of things where on the show I says I was going to New York and within 15 minutes he's saying I was going to New York I was invited to actually take part in St Patrick's Day Parade <laughs> in New York and Next thing, I was invited to take part in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And you say to yourself, it's amazing. The thing is, doing the show, you you realise there's so many good people out there uh-huh. that are Celtic fans and that listen to the music, who enjoy the music. There is so many good people out there. And I, I totally love the show. 
and as I say, hopefully every week we're getting more and more listeners. Uh, we do go crazy a wee bit, but on the first part of the show, we always like to try and keep it sensible. We come in, play the songs, have a chat. But as the beers take take effect, <laughs> part two and part three can be a bit crazy, right enough. But no, that's why we. Well, it was my boy that asked me to do it, and it's been coming up two years now that we've been doing oh, the show, and mm-hmm. it's. Uh, but no, I've really enjoyed doing it, and then hopefully we'll continue to do it. Fantastic as well. It's an so. excellent show. Well, I always try and keep it different. The show I always try and structure the show. Uh, from the first half hour, having the first hour Celtic songs, Celtic football club songs, Irish songs, Irish folk songs, different songs, then maybe your last three quarters an hour Irish Republican rebel songs, if that's what you want to call it, songs mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. songs of hope and freedom and joy. So it's <laughs> they they kind of thing. So we try and structure the show yeah. that it's, it, where we can try and capture a full audience mm. to the show. Instead of just keeping it all rebs and things like that, it's yeah. Irish, so doctors, Damien Dempsey, things like that, so mm-hmm. Christy Moore, so it's all different types of songs. Yep. But that's how we started the show, it was actually my boy's idea, and I'm glad he did because it, uh, there's nothing worse coming in on a Friday night, working all week, mm-hmm. and just I would I just like to sit out, chill out, and if I can sit down and chill out with a load of people in the chat room talking, things like that, it's great. It's a great way to relax. Your second song, what would that be? The second song is, again, it was around this, the the madness area. And I remember this was one of the first songs I actually bought. And it's a special ghost town. And I, I, I was at primary school and I just remember I was that excited going up and buying it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> because it was one of my first ever songs I bought. Aye. And it was just, at the time, it was just a great song. Fantastic. That was Ghost Town by The Specials. Who were your influences and heroes? Growing up, I had a lot of people around my life. Mm-hmm. As I say, earlier on about my cousins, things like that. But as I say, my mum, right? Uh, my mum had a, a big say in, in my life. My mum and my two sisters, uh, we were speaking before it, Billy, and the kind of, my dad worked away a lot. Uh, my dad liked the drink and things like that when I was younger but then got himself sorted out but he worked away like he worked on the oil rigs for a while then he worked in the shipbuilding so he was going away for two three weeks mm-hmm. at a time and like my mum as I say is grown up like and it's uh, what can I say about my mum Joe I don't know if I'm allowed to say this but like my mum thinks she's a Virgin Mary <laughs> and she's got three wains <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's at chapel all the time. Uh, and when we were uh, growing up, we were dragged along to chapel every Sunday. Well, saying dragged along to chapel, I was an altar boy. <laughs> Do you know? And I was an altar boy for... I, I must have started being an altar boy about nine, ten. Right. right? And I, I served my last mass on a Sunday and I started work on a Monday. Right. <laughs> uh, so I was right up to 16. And I used to go... I spent in my, quite a lot of my summers up in a place called Nunro Abbey. It's something uh, by Garvald. And my dad introduced it because it was through A. A lot of A punters used to go up there and I get dragged along with him as a wane. But I, I went up all the time uh, when I was a bit older myself. And I used to actually take my grand up with me, God love him. Uh, he used to come with us and what have you. So my grand was a, an old Irishman and he used to come with us uh, and me and my granddad we went in the summers we used to go to Nurnal Abbey then we used to go down to Doncaster me and my granddad done quite a lot uh, in, during the summer yeah. and what have you as I say he was an old Irishman he was so funny uh, and he didn't realise he was funny but he was so funny but growing up I think and it was like my mum and my two sisters because they were always there yeah. uh, and unfortunately my dad he was away working mm. so with the influences uh, we grown up. I've got to say, like my mum was the, the influences mm. and what have you. Uh, but as I say, and during the summer, like my granda, yeah. uh, used to. And my granda was a type of. <coughs> he was an old Irishman, where he never spoke about anything. Like I'll tell you a couple of quick stories. Believe it or not, he used to always the, the deep Irish. I came from Donegal. 
And I remember one day, it was it was me and my mum, he was telling the story, and my mum says, oh, there's G's t- dead tall, he takes after my mother. She says, my mother was a very large woman, and we'd never heard him speaking about his, his family. And he started to tell a story, and it's the saddest story I think I've ever heard. Mm. When he was 12, he, he worked in the, the fields, in the potato fields, and he says, that morning I woke up, he says, and my mum gave me my wee bag with a piece and an apple in it. He says, and I walked out of the cottage and walked to the end of the road, and he was 12 years of age, and I turned round and I waved to her, and my younger brother, Joe, and my younger sister Kathleen were standing next to her and they were waving me off to work and I waved to them and I knew it would be the last time I'd see her. And he actually left there then went straight to the docks. So to go from Donegal, he just, as a young boy at 12 years of age, knew then he would never see his mother again. And you say to yourself, that was the saddest story I think I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And what he did do, he actually went down to the docks and he got on what was called then the, the cattle ferry mm-hmm. and basically the cattle from Ireland to Scotland he went down and if you fell in you fell in they left you to drown mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. didn't like the cattle were more important yeah. than you were mm-hmm. uh, and that was one of the, the saddest stories that I've heard but as I say it's like uh, that's well, that was kind of the man my granda was came to uh, uh, the Gallagate and just, I don't know what he'd done, but he obviously he met my, my granny, who'd actually came from Maville mm-hmm. as well, so she'd came over to Scotland, he met her, and what have you, but as I say, but my influences, yeah, I've got to say, my mum was always the one who drag us to chapel and things like that, so, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was crazy, younger days, but yeah. As I say, it's unfortunately, it was just my dad was away working. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And but we had good times. Like we were always going on holidays and things like that as well. So uh, although he was away working, it was we we seen the benefits as kids. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So your third song, what would that be? The third song, I still you too. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And see, before you play this, can I tell you a quick story? Okay. We were. Sitting one Sunday, I must have been just when the song was out, and we were sitting, me and mum and dad were in the house, and next time mum's sitting right away. Sister says, What are you doing? She says, None of your business. I says, What are you doing? She says, I'm just getting everything written down. I says, Written down for what? She says, My funeral. <laughs> and I says, Right, okay. I says, Why? She says, Then you know. What hymns to play and everything And I says Do you know I says See when I go I says See when I'm getting carried out Play You too I still mm-hmm. haven't found what I'm looking for mm-hmm. And she says Right I says And do you know I wouldn't mind getting a kilt On as well And maybe Getting a When I'm lying in my coffin This sounds dead really morbid But <laughs> this was the way The conversation went And I says and When I'm lying in my coffin I says I wouldn't mind a kilt And maybe a galley shirt and I could see her thinking, her wee head thinking over. And about 30 seconds, she says, Oh, that's fine. She says, I'll be able to hire it out of that shop up the road there. <laughs> <laughs> I says, What did you say? And me and my dad looked at each other. She says, I'll be able to hire it. See that wedding shop up? They hire kilts out, so I'll be able to hire it, hire one. I went, What are you going to do? Wait till they're putting them in the ground and shout, Wait a minute, that kilt's due back the morrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, so so that's the kind of story linked to that song, but uh, it's just you two. I've seen them. I actually seen the you two. Uh, I went from like madness, like went on to you two, and I seen madness, and I was fourteen, uh, and it was in the Barrowland when they were actually just starting to make it big in Scotland. So I was lucky enough to actually see them in the Barrowland when I was about 14 so that was Excellent. 29, 30 years ago do you know what I mean so uh, no and I've seen, seen them plenty of times since then but I, I totally love this song Right G what are your earliest memories of going to Celtic Park? Oh do you know I can actually still remember uh, my first game I can remember my first two games believe it or not and I must have only been about three and it wasn't 
my first ever Celtic game wasn't the Celtic Park, it was at Clyde Bank. Right. Now, if I, what I can remember, the Clyde Bank, they had a, the social club. Uh, they must have had, like, the ground, uh, the social club looked onto the ground, because I can kind of remember that. Mm-hmm. But my dad was still on the drink at the time. And he, I, I still remember, like, he came and picked me up, I think it was half cut, once he came after the Saturday morning, once he'd finished his shift, got me, took me back, he went to Clyde Bank, and he was sitting with all his, all his mates, and they were all sitting drinking, and the, the Celtic scarf on, and the reason why they, I remember it so clearly, is they all loved me. Not that I was a cute Wayne or anything, I was standing, and I looked down at the side of the cigarette machine, Right, and they were holding the back of it. <laughs> and every time somebody went and bought a packet of fags, the money came down the back of it. Right. And I was that small, I could actually crawl in and get the money. <laughs> and me, my dad, and all his mates thought I was wonderful. And that's now, I actually thought at the time, you know, I was like, these guys, these men think I'm a great <laughs> Wayne. And it's only now I look back and say, they only wanted me so I could get the money out of the fag machine. <laughs> and I remember seeing it and I remember putting my hand down and I crawled down and my dad started to shout what are you doing what are you doing and I came out with a 50 pence piece and he's like where did you get that son I was tone of voice changed a whole lot <laughs> and do you know I think they were, I think my dad and all his mates were all bluttered <laughs> uh, and it was for, out of me out of everybody in the club that bought fags that day I was as soon as they put the money in and I think it was about 60 pence 70 pence for a packet of fags right. At that, those times, so every time they put money in, I just crawled in and picked it up and gave it to them. So they get bluttered. I got a packet of Chris and a can of juice. So as I say, that was my first ever <laughs> uh, Celtic game. So and I thought I was, I felt I thought I was important because I was the youngest one there. Little did I know I was important because I was the only person to get the, the money out of the fag machine. Maybe but, not happen to Clyde Bank. I well, exactly. <laughs> I think the social club went bankrupt the following week. So, no. But that was... My second one was uh, Dundee United and I went with my Uncle John, believe it or not. Uh, he took me in and we went in full Coles supporters bus. Coming for Langone is uh, a Saturday... It was always jumping round the main street because all those buses left, left really full coals and that. So I remember that was my second ever game, and I, I must have only been about four or five then as yeah, well. Yeah. I think the best game I've ever been to was when we beat Dundee United 2 1. Mm-hmm. Again, I went with my cousin Pat. Me and Pat were like brothers, to be honest with you. I went with him and an our, our, our wee pal, and I remember going into Hamden, and it's just that's when they just opened the gates and everybody barged right, in. Right. Uh, that was another a great experience. I totally loved that game as well, going off her head. But Excellent. no, so going from extremes to being at Dundee, uh, going off her head, then basically uh, going to Clyde Bank. But that was early. So I always went with with the the West End. They they ran a wee bus, the West End Bar in Cobridge, mm-hmm. uh, with Marky and things like that. Uh, they always took his uh, part, and they, they hate it. I think they used to take, uh, like, draw out the hat. Uh, who was going to give me a give me a lift over? Like, mm. like I was born six feet. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? That's <laughs> see, growing up, I was just like tall, and that was it. Do you know what I mean? I think I was born this height. I always keep my my mum going, and I remember she cracked up at me once, and she was talking about my height. I says, oh, I says, away you go. I says, you were in labour for three weeks. And she says, aye, I know I was. I says, aye, the doctors forget to take your tights off. <laughs> and saying that to my mum, <laughs> it was like, oh my God, like the devil's coming to take you away. <laughs> but I was kind of keeping her going because she kept on going on about the height and how bad a labour she had and everything. And I was like, doctors forget, forgot to take your tights off. Do you know what I mean? So, but as I say, going to the football, I would totally, throughout my days and my teenagers and my uh, teen. Uh, I totally loved it. Brilliant. One of the wee stories I forgot to mention was I remember I was about, must have been about 18, 19, and I'd actually, st- I hadn't stopped going to the games because I'd, I, I got a job and I was working on Saturday. So I kind of uh, didn't get a, a chance to get to as many games as I wanted. But I remember my cousin again, her part says to me, I've got a ticket. Celtic and Rangers game Parkhead and I was meant to be all my, my mates we used to hang about with so we're about a crowd is all went 
and in Langone at the front you had a row of pubs you had the Buchanan Arms and I remember coming back for the game we went in there and we got chucked out and I was barred I never drank the place in my puff but I was barred then we went into a pub and it was called the Pop Inn but we were all carrying on and the table got upturned so we chucked out of that and I was barred for there I'd never drank the place then we went into Phil Coles <coughs> and we all get chucked out there but when I came out I was like I can't believe it. I was jumping for joy and now anybody thinks saying you get chucked out of a pub jump for joy you're off your nut yeah. the man that chucked me out was a man Tommy Burns and I came out and I'm jumping about saying Tommy Burns chucked me out of a pub <laughs> you dancer <laughs> and I was I was dead chuffing myself when I went home I says to my dad I get chucked out of a pub Tommy Burns done it <laughs> and the best is I'd actually met him a few days later and I said to Tony, I said, I said, I'd like to apologise. I said, he's that. Don't be daft. Uh, and he was, you know, he was such a gentleman. I had like a five, ten minute chat with him. I said, we're all young boys right, and right. what have you. But I was dead chuffed that I got chucked out of <laughs> the pub with Tommy Burns. <laughs> but as I say, a couple of days later I met him. And, and as I say, I'd, I was going to work in a shirt and tie on. And when he seen me... Uh, and he's like, I said, I'd like to apologise. A few, a few too many. And he's like, I ah, don't worry. But he was such a, he was such a gentleman. So he was, but he was great. But I was dead chuffed that I get chucked out the pub <laughs> from him. So I just thought I'd get that wee story in there. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, your fourth song, who would that be? That was, uh, do you know, I was introduced to this song not so long ago. And I've got to, I've actually got to thank the, the parrot, believe it or not, for introducing me to this guy. And it's Luca Bloom. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I, I heard this song, I, I just fell in love with it. And it's Don't Be Afraid of the Light. It's just, a, a, it's a class song. Right, G, what irritates you? I've actually got to think about this one. Mm-hmm. And no doubt once I go away, I'll say, oh, this irritates me. I would like, do you know what I was going to say? I would like to think I'm quite a child camp person. Mm-hmm. Ask my wife and kids and they they would be able to give you a list you know what I mean of things that irritate me and I would say if anything irritates me it's wee wee stupid things Mm -hmm. like the boys not picking up after them things like that Uh, out in the car when you've got stupid drivers that cut you up and things like that I wouldn't say like things really irritate me I I would like to think I'm I'm quite a a calm person Mm -hmm. Uh, my wife will probably think totally different and say totally different she thinks her and the Wayne's thinks I'm a crab and I'll go off my nut at anything and that was one of my New Year's resolutions once they stop being crab it but then I realised I wasn't crab it so I just blamed them <laughs> I says you must be crab it and you must be very sensitive because there's nothing wrong I'm not crab it so it, I think it was them and I think just asking people to tidy their room up and things like that and do you know what it is? I think it's the way I come across, right? Because I used to work down in England, right? And I remember we had a meeting. Now, we actually had a meeting with our Scottish team and I was our manager. And I came up to Scotland and we were having what we would call a Northern staff meeting. And the next day, I get in a flight down to London and I get pulled straight in the office. And he says, what happened yesterday? I says, what do you mean? What happened to the meeting? I says, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. We heard that these were all ready to kill each other. And this lassie of England had come up and obviously was doing a bit of training and she'd report it they were all going to kill each other and it's just the way I came across. Uh-huh. But the way I come across is just normal. Aye. It's other people who've got the problem because I'm just quite happy and sensible and things like that. But my wife thinks I come across dead angry. I, I'm quite a chilled out person. So things that irritate me, I would say there's not much things that irritate me I would say I'm, I'm quite I don't go on my high horse for anything mm-hmm. or that. it's only very seldom that I do get on my high horse but if I do no doubt I've, I'll have a good explanation of why <laughs> I need to go on my high horse but when things irritate me and I, I, I'm quite chilled well I believe you <laughs> <laughs> well do you know a lot of people when a lot of people say oh, no way he's and if, even my mum I can't, I can't understand my mum say you've got a terrible temper mm. and I don't it's just I, I don't have a terrible temper I, I can remember once I lost my temper and I, I was in my younger days I was a taxi driver and this this is one of the kind of things that irritate me see when 
and if any taxi drivers are out there they'll know what I'm talking about the guy jumped in at the front and he says I says where are you going pal just drive I went ok I says well I'm, there's a roundabout 15 yards left or right turn right hitting out with this part I went right ok so I says, I says why put your seatbelt on just drive hitting out with that so I was starting to get wound up so I went about 200 yards and I kind of speeded up a wee bit and I says where are we going just drive so I slammed on the brakes and he battered his head against the window screen I says where are you going he says I'm going to Kirkwood I says could you not have just says that <laughs> so they kind of <laughs> guys like that I just when he was driving that he was he was irritating me so that is the kind of person I would say I get irritated it was just the way he got on just drive like a big hard man so I just slammed on the brakes he battered his head off the wind screen I says where are you going I'm going to Kirkwood just tell me that then pal right. so that's what kind of irritates me <laughs> right, I'm frightened to ask you this <laughs> your fifth song that's the only you've got me wound up now that's the thing uh, my, my fifth song I'm going back to you too because again I remember I seen them at Parkhead uh, and the Bono sang this song and it was just it was it was just it's just an excellent song mm. so and it's you too one that was one by you two. How do you relax? As I say earlier on, I relax on a, a Friday night, believe it or not. See, doing the show. Uh, and a lot of people might think, oh, he's just saying that and what have you. I actually, I love sitting on a, a Friday night mm-hmm. doing the show. Because I always, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll sit on a Thursday night for an hour and I'll relax on a Thursday night because what I'll do is I'll get my songs ready and the playlist ready and I'll try and time it up if I'm having any guests on and things like that mm-hmm. then when I'm sitting doing the show but I've done the Thursday night and I've, although even though I've been doing the show for coming up two years no point me doing it on a Thursday night because it can just go to pot mm-hmm. on the Friday night and that's why I love doing the show yeah. just on the Friday night but I, I relax doing the show on a Friday night uh, when I come in uh, I just try and chill out I sit uh, if anybody listens to the show I've even I just like to sit with a bottle of buck fast mm-hmm. do you know what I mean I've said it oh my god <laughs> my mum will kill me for broadcasting that uh, <laughs> and even my do you know even though I drink buck fast uh, my poor wife uh, who's I'm going to dedicate the last song here but uh, she's in the hospital just now when we first got married I wasn't allowed to drink it in the house mm-hmm. do you know what I mean so that irritated me <laughs> she should have went back and asked me that in the first question <laughs> uh, but as I say no, when I go back to relax I, I do relax on a Friday night but I, I like to go swimming mm-hmm. I haven't been me and the missus we go swimming and it's wee things like that uh, Sometimes me and the missus will just jump in the car and we'll go away. And the good thing is the boys are starting to get to the age where we can leave them now. Do you know what I mean? They're old enough and it's uh, and it's good because me and the missus are getting a wee bit of us time now. They yeah. spend a wee bit of time on our own, just doing stupid things and things like that. Going out in the car, uh, going for a walk and things like that. So it's all these kind of things. And spending time with my boys and my wife, that they relax me. Yeah. As long as you two aren't fighting in the back seat, man, you're like <laughs> jump in the back and kill them. Do you know what I mean? Uh, no, it's that's the kind of things I kind of get chilled out at. And a Friday night, I enjoy relaxing. And a Saturday night, I kind of half relax because she's got her soaps on and Aunt and Deck are jumping about <laughs> in the background and all that. And yep. she's like, You like relaxed? Aye, I'm relaxed. <laughs> I'm relaxed after this bottle and 20 cans. It's the only time I'll be relaxed on a Saturday night listen to all your. TV programmes but no uh, I enjoy doing the, the show on a Friday night and that kind of relaxes me good stuff right your sixth song my sixth song is I was do you know I was I, I'd, I'd actually never heard of this song and I heard it uh, because unfortunately it was through a, a terrible circumstance it was uh, my my pal's sister had lost her boy and they'd asked me if I could put find this song and put it on a CD and things like that for them uh, and I found it and I think this, anybody can relate to this song uh, it's just uh, an excellent song and it's Five for Fighting uh, Superman uh, it's not easy being me right uh, so what does the future hold for you 
See, you're asking a guy who has been brought up to live one day at a time, and you're saying, look in the future. Uh, what I would like to happen, or what I think is going to happen, what <laughs> I would want in the future, I think, uh, you know, for what holds for me is I just obviously keep working mm-hmm. and things like that. Uh, me and my wife, two of us work together, just keep that going. Uh, I would love to think that at the age of 65, the two of us could retire mm-hmm. and we're wanting to buy a wee bungalow yeah. uh, in Lanzarote. Now that's what we want. What will happen? We'll probably work to our 70 <laughs> and scrimp and scrape <laughs> like everybody else and make sure we've got stuff for our own wains. We'll get married and a way out. Then we'll have the grand wains coming in and we'll still scrimp and scrape to find them. So, But that, no, hopefully the, uh, we'll just keep working. That's... Uh, that's what I, I, I want. I mean, that's. We don't ask for much. I'm. Just, I'm just quite happy with, if the two of us have got a job, we've got a house, and the kids are happy and mm-hmm. what have you. That's. I'm quite happy with that. And whatever the future holds for us, holds for us. I'm a, I'm a believer of what's for you won't go by you. Yeah. Yeah. So as I say, we kind of just love a day at a time or what have you. So what we want. Yeah, we want to retire when we're 65, get a wee villa in uh, Lanzarote and go out there six months a year. And But, but I'm sure everybody would love that, but <laughs> we're kind of realistic as well. Uh, so just as long as we've... The two, as long as the twos are happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Once the kids get away and we don't find out that we bore each other and get divorced, <laughs> I mean? <laughs> when people get married and their kids are up and away and then they look at each other and say, yeah. Don't really like you. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Oh, if my wife hears this, man, she'll kill me. Oh, no, I'm only, I'm only kidding. But uh, no, as I say, that the two is grow old together. Do you know what I mean that's what that's what the future. That's what I want for the future. The two is grow old together. Do you know what I mean? So as I say, uh, that's that. What would you like to see changed in Scotland? Do you know that's quite a hard one. Believe it or not, I think equality. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking. I'm I'm actually talking about a lot of things, uh, and I'm talking about a lot of business sense as well. And I and this is a part of life. I'm not going to go into, it, but uh, a lot of business sense. And even now, it is within Scotland. It's who you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not what you do or anything like. That, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see an equal playing field for quite a lot of things. And as I say, I'm not just. I'm going away from football and things like yeah. just now. I'm talking yeah. about. Uh, in business, but I'm talking about in, in equality for for people, for uh, for people just to get a fair crack at the whip, and it doesn't happen. And I know a lot of people can say it doesn't happen all over, mm. but that's what I would love to see for people to get the, a fair crack at the whip in Scotland, where there is a wee bit of equality yeah. throughout, as I say, is, uh, throughout Scotland. That's what I would, I would love to see that happen. Right, if you had a chance to have a beer and a wee chat with anyone from history, who would it be? We've actually discussed this as a family, and we were all arguing. We have arguments quite a lot in the family, mm. uh, although they're good arguments because we have, well. A lot of people say arguments, but like they're heated debates. Yeah. And we had this one, this kind of question, but it was like, who would we invite the six people who right. would invite round the dinner table? And I, I'm thinking the six I've picked, but now you're asking me to pick one of them, and mm-hmm. it's it's quite difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's quite difficult because the six I kind of picked, I'd, I'd oh. Mandela, GFK, I had uh, James Conley, I had Bobby Sands. Do you know what? I'm going to go for Mandela. Mandela. I would sit down and have a beer with Mandela and mm-hmm. have that spirit to fight for what he did, where a lot of men would have just turned around and said, oh, yeah. well, I'm no having this hassle, mm-hmm. where that man fought for for his rights and his freedom. And for what you put through, and that's the kind of questions I would love to know how it was for him. Right, a bit more light-hearted. Who's your favourite cartoon character? I love Rainbow when I was a wee. But I think <coughs> I think it would need to be. I, I love The Simpsons. I like The Simpsons mm. as well. Right. And the wee see him turning into Homer. 
<laughs> I, don't, I didn't find that funny when they actually <laughs> said that. You're starting to turn into Homer. And I was like, oh, thanks very much. But uh, see, when the when the Waynes were younger, right. we used to, as things you, you done when they were like jumping about, is like Barney, the big purple dinosaur. <laughs> You kind of took on their actions to try and get them to shut up. Oh, he wasn't a cartoon character, was he? No, he wasn't. I don't think he was. He was the just guy one. A costume. A guy in a costume, and <laughs> uh, the guy with the the blue bear hang guy as well. He wasn't a cartoon character. Uh, <laughs> Wearing a big blue house. Bear, bear, ah, that's him. <laughs> Burn the big blue house. Would you know we actually had to drive about two hours to go and see him in a shopping centre once? <laughs> For the Wayne uh, jumping about. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was for me. <laughs> I wanted to see it. I'm better. I'm hey, better. Uh, no, that's a difficult one. I, I, the cartoon characters. I see Rainbow wasn't a cartoon character no. as well, but as I say, uh, if I'm going for a, a cartoon character, right, I'm going to say Batman. Batman. Batman, yeah, because I, I loved the films and things right. like that. And as I say, uh, do you know, I, I, I'm ashamed to admit that I've even got Batman game on for my PS3. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but I go back to it, probably Batman. Right, excellent. there you go. Right, your penultimate song. I see, yeah, I'll, I've got to play this because see, as soon as I, I get a few beers in in me. Uh, I'll sit down, I'll sing this to my wife, and I'm, I'm going to say this to my wife. My poor wife's lying in the hospital now, uh, although she'll probably be out by the time this goes lie, uh, goes on air and all that. But uh, I'm going to dedicate her because uh, I love her to bits. She's given me the two best things that I've, anybody could ask for, and that's my two boys mm. uh, and what have you. I have her moments like any other couple, but uh, I'm going to just say this is for... The Mrs. Mrs. G, which a lot of people know her of, and it's uh, Krista Muir, Black is a Colour. Right, we've come to the part of the programme where I give you the complete works of the dandy and a copy of the Bible to take with you to your island. Would you like a copy of the Bible? <sighs> Aye, do you know, I probably would, I. But then I don't know if I would or not because it would be quite, quite depressing reading it all and knowing that I've got to be good. But it would give me something to read, mm-hmm. so I probably would. Right. But then I would go if I was in a desert island, if I read the Bible I'd be saying, God, why are you put me on this desert island mm-hmm. where I've got nothing to do? I would probably just take it just for the sake of reading it, that's all. Mm-hmm. And it's terrible to say that, my mum will batter me for saying that, but I'll take it. Good. Which other book would you take and why? Uh, <clears throat> I loved, I love uh, Stephen King. Mm-hmm. I enjoy reading a Stephen King book. Uh, I think that one of the best books I've read is The Stand. But if I'm being honest with you, I think I would need to take a new book because there's no point in me taking a book that I've already read. Yeah. The reason I would take a new book, so I would read it and I would take the risk if it was going to be rubbish or not, instead of taking a book that I've already read, mm-hmm. which in would enjoy if that makes sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so instead of me saying all oh, my favourite books this one I would take that what's the right. point of taking it because I've already read it so I would risk taking a new book oh, any, that's any the book. first is that the first time you've ever had that yeah, answer yeah, first time had that answer I, I'm just trying to be logic yeah, about yeah, it there's no point in, there's no point in taking a book that I like because I've already read it so I would rather just take a new book ok right a luxury, something to make your life a bit more bearable on the island. And remember, it can't be another human being, and it can't be a mobile phone. Can it be alcohol? Oh yeah, if you want alcohol. I was, you know, I was going to say take a, a few bottles of wine with me, but I can only drink it cold, so I wouldn't have a fridge. I'll go for the the wine. Go for the wine. I'll stick it in the the water for a few hours and make it mm-hmm. cold. Then it's more drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't drink out of glass I only drink out of the bottle so so that does I don't need a glass either so I'd be quite happy with that sorted then aye that's well I've got a book and a bottle of wine that's happy days what else do you need <laughs> fantastic right uh, your final song my final song and I was lucky to actually see this this guy uh, again I actually didn't come across him until I started to do the show and I've got to thank Simmy uh, for this for this 
introducing me to to this guy and it's a guy called Damien Dempsey mm-hmm. and the song is Up Over My Eye and I seen him last year up at the Edinburgh Fest where me and Sammy and Liam went up to see him and it was just it was like obviously the hall but there were only about 60, 70 people when he came out just with him and his guitar and another guy and he didn't have the big band or anything with him but it was just him and the guy has an amazing voice Mm. and this is an amazing song Big G thank you very much for being a Desert Island Tim yep thanks very much for inviting me and I feel that's one part of my life I can say I can tick the wee box and say well I've met Billy that's it (laughs) (laughs) thanks very much